Hey! Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Nomadic Geek. In the first video of this series, we used the AZ Envy development board equipped with a gas sensor and humidity and temperature sensors to stream its readings and transmit them via WebSockets. In the second video, we set up a Node.js server to stream the sensor values to. In the third video, we constructed the web client page, which displayed the values streamed from the sensors to the Node.js server. In the previous video, we set up the ESP32 cam to stream video to the Node.js server. In this video, we'll be using TensorFlow object detection to analyze the stream in real time and detect objects within the video. TensorFlow is a powerful machine learning framework and by the end of this video, you'll have a system that can detect objects in the video stream. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you know when I post more content. Stay tuned and let's get started. TensorFlow is an open source machine learning framework that allows developers to build and deploy machine learning models for a variety of tasks. It provides tools and libraries for building and training models, including pre-trained models and a range of optimization algorithms. We'll be using a pre-trained model to detect objects in the video stream. In an upcoming video, we'll show you how to create your own custom model. By creating a custom model, we can fine-tune it to focus on the specific objects that are relevant to us, which can improve the accuracy of the object detection. So stay tuned for that video. Let's code. Open the Node.js project. The first line of code imports the Coco SSD module from the at TensorFlow models package. This module provides the pre-trained object detection model for detecting common objects and images. The Coco SSD module is built on top of TensorFlow.js, so we need to have the at TensorFlow slash TFJS node package installed in order to use it. It allows us to run TensorFlow.js code on the server side, for example to train models, perform inference, or pre-process data. As the pre-trained object detection model is designed to detect common objects and images, it's important to consider which objects we want to target for detection. For instance, if the camera is mounted inside a van, it may not be relevant to detect objects like trains or freezers. Instead, it would be more useful to focus on objects that are likely to be present in the camera's field of view, such as people or my cat. From experience while working with TensorFlow, exceptions can often cause the server to crash rather than gracefully handling the issue. Therefore, it's important to implement exception handling in order to prevent server downtime and ensure the smooth operation of our system. This code sets up two event listeners, one for uncaught exception events and one for unhandled rejection events. The uncaught exception event is emitted when an exception is thrown from an uncaught exception handler. This can happen if an exception is thrown in a JavaScript event handler, for example. The unhandled rejection event is emitted when a promise is rejected and no error handler is attached to the promise within a turn of the event loop. For both events, the event listeners log the error or rejection reason and the origin of the error or rejection, if provided, and log the memory status of the TensorFlow.js runtime using console.table tf.memory. This can be useful for debugging and diagnosing issues that may occur in your code. It can help you understand what caused the error or rejection, and whether there are any issues with the TensorFlow.js runtime that may be contributing to the problem. Now, we can load our model. An async function is a function that is designed to return a promise that resolves when the function is complete. This allows you to use the await keyword inside the function to wait for asynchronous operations to complete before continuing. In this case, the load model function is an async function that loads the Coco SSD model. The load method returns a promise that resolves when the model is loaded, so the function returns a promise that resolves to the loaded model. Once the model is finally loaded, which can be a resource-intensive process, we'll proceed to use the then callback function, which is executed when the promise is resolved. 
The callback function is passed the resolved value of the promise, in this case, the loaded model, as an argument. In this instance, the callback function simply logs a message to the console indicating that the model has finished loading. As we want the model to be loaded only once, before the rest of our application starts, we place all the code from earlier videos in this tutorial series inside the then callback function. We are also tidying up the code and properly indenting it for improved readability and maintainability. Let's run the code and see how it behaves so far. We are missing the two modules that we included in our script. No need to worry, as we have done in an earlier video, we simply need to install them before we can run the code. We try again so that we can know what the module is called. Copy the name and install it with npm install. This can take a while, so be patient. Now let's run again with the modules installed. As we can observe, the connections were initiated after the model was successfully loaded, as intended. Now, terminate the server again by pressing Ctrl plus C twice and return to the code. As we want to run predictions of the images from the streaming ESP32 cam module, we go down in the code to where we store the image to the connection object. Rather than storing the image as a property of the connection object directly, as we currently do, we will instead store the image to a variable named IMG. This will allow us to perform predictions on the frame and determine if any of the specified objects are present. If any such objects are detected, the image will be recorded in the database. Concurrently, the frame is still also transmitted to clients in real time. This line runs the tensorflow.js decode image method to decode an image from raw image data into a tensor object. The tensor representing the image, it can be passed to other tensorflow functions for further processing and analyzing. We call the model.detect method and passes the IMG tensor variable as an argument. The method returns a promise that resolves to an array of predictions. The callback function, then, is executed when the promise is resolved, and it prints the class of the object and its score to the console. After use, the tf.dispose method is called with the IMG tensor variable as an argument, this will free up GPU memory by disposing the tensors that are no longer needed by the model. Let's try out the code and see if we can catch something in our console. It prints the class followed by the score, indicating the level of certainty. As we can see, it has no problems detecting my laptop. We return to the code and add some logic to store the images in a database when it matches objects we have specified in the valid entities array. We are saving the images to a JSON file, which is named based on the current timestamp and saved in a directory named after the class of the prediction, such as cat, dog, or person. 
Each file will contain the score, image, and a prediction box that encompasses the dimensions and placement of the detected object. Now, we need to create directories that match the names of the classes we are allowing to be stored. We also need to include the Fluid DB library. We temporarily add Laptop to the array so that we can test the image storing functionality easily. We can observe that it begins saving JSON files within the laptop directory as soon as it identifies it. To prevent unnecessary clutter, we will make some modifications so that the object detection is only run once every, say, 30 frames. We also only want to save a frame when the prediction is sufficiently certain, that is, has a high score. We are checking if the score is higher than the threshold. We set the threshold to 0.7. We also set counter to 0. We enclose the object detection with an if statement that makes the detection only run when the counter is equal to the specified frequency. Each frame increments the counter by 1. We also need to reset the counter once it's the same value as frequency. We set the frequency to 20 and tries the code out one last time. As we can observe, the detection rate has decreased, and it will only save the images if the certainty is above 0 0.7. 1.0 is the highest possible level of certainty. This concludes this episode of the tutorial series. In the next episode of our tutorial series, we'll be adding sensors with the ESP32 CAM module. These sensors will provide additional data which will be streamed in parallel to the video stream. We hope you're looking forward to it, and as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.